Hello everyone and welcome back to the Blue Bounty Hunter channel. Now if you just started Jedi Survivor, then you know that the first planet you explore is Coruscant, and more specifically, the underworld of said Coruscant, which takes you across multiple rooftops, alleyways, and bars, but it's easy to find yourself getting swept away into the story without time to look at all of the details. So that's why I've gone ahead and done the dirty work for you by discovering 10 huge easter eggs throughout the map, like reused TIE Fighter windows, ancient Zepho relics, and even the skull of a Mon Calamari fighter. Number 1 is the Imperial Billboard. So yeah, basically you just walk up here at this kind of cross section between these two walkways, and it has this big red sign with Orabesh, which is actually the kind of language of Star Wars that is commonly seen, and using Google I was able to actually translate the text from Orabesh into English, and the sign is actually very simple. It just says restricted area by order of the empire, with restricted area being the big bold text, and by order of the empire being the smaller area right below that that you can see here in this picture. This isn't the only sign in the level with Orabesh writing on it that could be translated, but as it is one that is seen frequently with the imperial logo, it is arguably the most striking and even important, I dare say. Oh, how rude. Number two is TIE Fighter Windows. So this addresses the many different homes and other buildings throughout the map that feature windows that appear to just be reused TIE Fighter Windows. So as we can see here, there are just a bunch of different buildings with these kind of eight sectioned off pieces of glass that make up the, these windows and they're just all over the place throughout the map, like this location right here. And then also a little bit later on, you can just see this huge, huge community of almost like homes, it seems like, these just houses that have all of these different TIE Fighter windows. And it is pretty interesting that all of these areas for citizens were just made out of really poor designs. And right here, we can just see a really good close up of one of these windows and what it really looks like and it, it does genuinely just look like a TIE fighter. Maybe this is just an imperial architecture thing though since Palpatine's throne room also had a vaguely similar design but honestly I think this just looks too close to the TIE fighter windows to be a coincidence. At number three we have lifting plates. So as you can see in this other area of the underworld there are actually these two interesting looking plate things on the ground and I was actually curious if these are are supposed to be like you know lifting weights for weightlifting in the Star Wars universe now they could also just be some kind of mechanical thing that is meant to bolt together multiple ships or something but they do look remarkably similar to just like some plates maybe some 45s I can't really tell so I wonder if this is an Easter egg or maybe I'm just over analyzing all these little details and I mean honestly I'm disappointed that Cal didn't stop and get his gains in. I mean, obviously this is a limited setup, but he could still get some overhead plate lunges and even plate raises in, just saying. And at number four, we have graffiti. This refers to many, many different areas throughout the map that show different uh, languages of graffiti and different colored paints like green and purple as you can see here. And it's just in all of these different areas like this spot right here that has just a lot of graffiti all over the place. And I just think it is a really cool detail that the developers put into this to make the world feel much more lived in. Now the interesting thing about this is while I'm sure a decent portion of it is in Orbesh, of course, that being the main Star Wars language, I actually wonder what some of these languages are. I mean, some of it might just be like art, like real world graffiti, but maybe some of it is in like Huttese or something like that. I'm not really familiar on all of the different languages in the Star Wars universe. If you're wondering why my character has a completely default appearance, it's because as of recording this, the game finished installing literally last night due to my internet, meaning I had to play the first level and then customize my character and then make a new save file and play through the first level again just to find all these hidden aspects of Coruscant. 
And at number 5, we have actually a bunch of different Attack of the Clones references throughout this city. But the first one is actually this kind of fire-like thing you can see all throughout the city here. Like at this one spot where in the distance you can see it kind of spewing out of these pipes. And it does look a lot like those spire things in Attack of the Clones when Anakin and Obi-Wan are on that speeder chase with Zam Wessel. There's a couple times where there's like fire and stuff. And looking at this sort of close up here, you can actually see some of the pipes do seem to be directed right under the ship itself, so that might have been a direct cause of that. But there does seem to be one main one in the middle here that's just kind of spewing out sparks on its own, which leads me to believe that maybe this is the same thing as an Attack of the Clones. And the other reference to Episode 2 is actually the speeder used by Anakin Skywalker in that speeder chase that I was referring to earlier. And as you can see here in this area, there's like a orange and yellowish version of that speeder that looks basically exactly the same. I mean, I'm sure it's the same model and everything. It has a little bit of a tarp put over it, but still has the same seats and control panel and everything. And the actual name of the speeder in Attack of the Clones that was used by Anakin was the XJ-6 Air Speeder that was owned by Senator Gray Shade and could reach speeds of 447 miles per hour. At number six, we have Desi's Noodles. And as you can see from this neon sign, here. This is actually a sort of restaurant slash bar in the underworld again that if we go up here you can see we have this little bar area with all of these chairs and stuff and there's actually this platter of soup that is lying here that's pretty cool. If we go over here to the side we can see a bunch of work places in the actual kitchen itself as well as some storage bins off to the side and if we pan the camera over we can also see the bar from the other side. There does not seem to be too much of a seating area in this restaurant, but it still has some workers and obviously a little bit of business from the signs and the soup and stuff, so yeah. And if we actually go up the stairs of this area, we will actually come across a stormtrooper that is doing the splits. I can't watch anymore. Okay, not really, but basically with all the dismemberment and other stuff, you can find some stormtroopers and some really funny poses. Number seven, we have the Headhunter Starfighter. And when Cal, Bode, and Bravo are escaping level 2046, Bode and Bravo use Z-75 Headhunters to fly out. This is relevant because the Headhunter Starfighter was used during the Clone Wars, especially towards the end of the war at events like the Battle of Umbara. This fast ship was equipped with two engines, Tame and Bach laser cannons, and even a retrofit hyperdrive, all of which made it an effective close air support fighter in the days of the Republic. On the way out, the heroes dodge the blasts of TIE fighters as their escape edges closer and closer. While Cal and Bode make great attempts to help Bravo out, he ends up succumbing to the arcs of energy in the portal area of the underworld as his ship obliterates into flame. For the end of the video, I'll be showing you three more details from inside Inside the Imperial yacht of Senator Daho Sajan as it has a surprising amount of secret objects. And with that said, at number 8, we have the wall collection of this ship. And this of course refers to this wall of different artifacts shown on the uh, ship behind his sort of desk where he gets arrested. And in here we can see a bunch of stone tablets and artifacts as well as a vase and some other interesting things. Things. And then also a dagger that could possibly be a vibroblade and some other plates at the top. And then as we go over here, we see some more stone tablets with a few different types of skulls, including what appears to be maybe some type of bird, some type of cow of sorts, and then even the skull of a Mon Calamari fighter. Well, I say fighter, it could really be any Mon Calamari 
person, but as they were sort of killed and their skull was taken from them, it would kind of make sense that they might have been a fighter in a war that got their head removed as a trophy. And up here at the top, you can actually see this plant that is actually a mushling that were indigenous to the swamps of Dathomir. Number nine, we have cups. And this simply refers to the fact that if you go to the other side of this large room over here, you can see a bunch of platters and cups and stuff and a lot of different maybe wines and alcohols and other beverages all across the wall over here. So it does seem that the senator was somewhat of a drinker as they have a lot of different cups just all over the place. But as we walk up the stairs to the top of the ship, we can find even more cups on the table over here. So yeah, cups, I guess. And at number 10, we have Zepho Relics. And in case you didn't play the first game, the Zepho or Zephonians were ancient force users native to the planet Zepho, where they were known to be excellent at using the force which they called Life Wind. The Zephonians eventually went extinct after a significant portion of the civilization went corrupt and turned to the dark side. Jedi Master Inno Cordova discovered a trail leading to the secrets of the Zepho that ranged from Kashyyyk, where the race had good relations with the Wookiees, to the vault on Bogano, where a Jedi holocron would later be stored. And as far as Jedi Survivor goes, if we look at this little hallway towards the bottom of the ship here, we can see three different Zepho artifacts, with one looking like a very big statue that we'd see in Fallen Order. The middle one is a little bit more unique, and the one on the far left, that's kind of the closest to us, that one just looks like a simple Zepho head, and it makes sense that it would kind of tie into the Empire and the Senator and even Cal Kestis himself. So those were the things from this world, and I must say that not only was this a great level, but also just the entire game so far all around seems fantastic, so I'm very excited to continue. Let me know if you want to maybe see more videos like this, where I go over 10 details you missed from each planet in order. Just a suggestion though. But anyway, that's it for this video. You can subscribe if you want to. I upload every Friday at 5 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and I also post shorts on Saturday. But uh, yeah. See ya.